Hi guys, it's Tyler. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So spring 2020, I took Math 104 with Professor Rimmer. And today I wanna to sit down and talk about the course. Today I wanna to kind of give a review of the difficulty of the course, quality of the course, how much time things took and just try to give you an idea of what to expect when you take Math 104. So Math 104 fulfills the formal reasoning and analysis foundation at Penn. You can think of the course as kind of like Calc BC, but it does have some things outside of Calc BC. Penn also offers Math 103, which is kind of like Calc AB in the same way, but again, it does go over some things that are outside of the realm of Calc AB. Summary of class structure. Um, before I start this, I want to say that I took Math 103 and Math 104 at Penn, and the structure is the same. So the structure of Math 104 is three midterms and a final. The midterms are basically monthly. Ours were on February 14th, March 23rd, and April 22nd. And the final will come about two weeks after the final midterm. So ours, I think, was May 6th, so somewhere around that time. So the course also includes weekly hand-in homeworks and weekly online homeworks. The hand in homework that I can show you is right here. Basically, there's about 10 questions on each one and you have to show your work on all of them and the answer key is at the bottom, but it doesn't show you what the answers are. So basically, it just kind of gives you a good guide, but it doesn't show you how to do it exactly. And you do these every week. You can do them with peers. It's not like a separate thing, so you can collaborate with them if you want and yeah and the online homework is done through pearson my math lab yeah you get the access code when you buy the course text and yeah it's kind of like a weird website it's one of those ones that are, i don't know i don't want to say it's trash but like it's just weird sometimes there's like a lot of glitches and stuff that i've experienced or just like the interface just isn't too polished but that's what you use so along with that, there are weekly recitations. During this recitation, your TA just kind of goes over what you've gone over so far that week and answers any burning questions that you have. During that recitation, you'll also fill out a recitation worksheet, which is just a little bit of practice from the things that you've done that week. This recitation worksheet is graded, but you can get help from your TA. So it's not like they'll do it for you, but if you have like any questions, it's not like a closed quiz where no one can help you. The both of the T's that I had in Math 103 and Math 104 were pretty like open to questions during these quizzes. So, you know, again, it's not like a locked in like exam situation. You get help from your TAs. So grading wise, your exams will be 75% of your grade. 45% of that grade is from the midterms and 30% is from the final. It's important for me to mention that your lowest midterm grade will be dropped. So that 45% will be coming from two exams. Also, your homework will account for 15% of your grade, 10% of the grade will come from the hand-in homeworks, and 5% will come from the online homeworks. And recitation worksheets will be the final 10% of your grade. And I wanna reiterate, one of your exams will be dropped. So if you don't do well on the first exam, you know, it is what it is, it'll be dropped. Just do the best that you can for the rest of the semester. All right, difficulty. So this class did get difficult for me a few times, especially when I got behind a lesson or two and it can kind of get hectic like quickly. For difficulty, I'd probably give it like a seven out of 10. Now this obviously depends on your background in math and like how much you really care about math. My background in math was I took Calc AB in 11th grade and I didn't take BC my senior year. I took IB Math SL and in IB Math SL, we didn't do much calculus. Like one section of the class really went over calculus, but it wasn't like a full calculus class. When I took the math diagnostic test at Penn, I got into Math 104, but I went the first day and they started going over volumes of rotation and like, I kind of remembered how to do that from 11th grade, but I thought about it and I was like, I just want to go back to Math 103 and get a good base. So that's what I did. I took Math 103 fall semester and then went to Math 104. But anyways, if you took Calc BC, um, you'll probably be fine for the most part. Um, you've kind of gone over some of the things, so it shouldn't be that difficult. Honestly, in retrospect, I kind of think I could have just went ahead and did 104. I think I got really um, 
intimidated by the whole, oh my gosh, this is an Ivy League class, everyone's so smart thing, and I just dropped down to 103 because of that, but in retrospect, I wish I would have stayed in 104, basically, but it is what it is. Um, if you take in Calc BC, you'll be fine in this class. The most difficult part about this class is the way that it forces you to make inferences about math when you, sometimes you're not explicitly taught the math. This class really pushes you to think about math, not just in the way that the teacher teaches it to you, but just in general. Um, but a lot of times it ends up where like no one can do it. I remember in my Math 103 class, and I think this happened in my Math 104 class also, but there was a question that was given to us that was based on what we learned, but like it's, the question was asked in a way that didn't really pertain to how we learned it. So everybody in the class couldn't get it, and we just dropped the question off once he figured out that everyone got it wrong. He just dropped the question off, but like it's that kind of thing where like we were all technically taught it, but like it's kind of hard to like turn that knowledge that we were taught into answering that question for a whole like Ivy League classroom like you would expect that one of us would be able to do it so that's the type of difficulty like there will be questions that there's a possibility that there will be a question that no one in the class will get right and that's just it is what it is also it's important for me to say that um, the consensus among students is kind of that Rimmer's class is harder with midterms but his classes usually do better on the final and other classes, you know, usually have a little bit easier midterms, not always, but generally, and sometimes perform a little bit worse in the final. So that's something to think about when you're picking your instructor, if you have that choice. Right. Quality of the course. Okay, so I didn't particularly enjoy this course just because I don't really like math that much. Like, I don't hate it, but it's just not like a passion of mine. I definitely feel like this course is well taught and I feel like there's a lot of resources to get help if you do fall behind. There's a lot, a lot of, lot of office hours, especially Professor Rimmer. He just has like a lot of office hours in general, but you can go to different teachers if you want. Um, the TAs in this course are really helpful. And again, you can go to any of the TAs if yours isn't available. Um, they also have really strong connections with the tutoring services, so they just, it's a really, it's a well-taught course. I will say sometimes the course did feel a little artificially difficult um, in the way that I kind of explained in the last clip where we're taught things in a very explicit way and we're expected to apply that knowledge to problems that aren't really put in that same way. I feel like that's kind of an artificial difficulty where the professor could just kind of tell us or give us at least one example of the question being asked this way or the knowledge being used in this way. So that's like my one knock on the course. It does feel artificially difficult sometimes. Overall, for the quality of the course, I would give it like a seven, eight out of 10 overall. Again, I just don't have a passion for math, so it is what it is. Final thoughts slash tips to succeed. Overall, this course can be difficult or easy depending on how much time and effort you put into it. It's a very fast paced course where if you get behind, like you really have to like work hard and get back on track because every single class, like I have my lecture three times a week. Every single lecture is a different topic. It's not like where there's not many times where you're going to come back to class and you're going to be on the exact same PowerPoint. Every single class is a different PowerPoint for the most part. So if you do get behind one or two, you gotta hurry up because you have a you have a hand in homework and you have an online homework on the topics that you're behind on by the end of the week. So like, there's not much getting behind in this course. You really have to stay on course. <laughs> yeah, my tip would be to make sure that you have a good group of friends in this course or just people that you know that will study with you, that will do the homework with you and just keep you on track because that's the biggest thing with this course. Also, even if you don't take the class with Rimmer, please do get this book. This book basically has everything that you need. Um, it has a bunch of exam style questions. It has the, um, the answers on the back. So it shows you the answer and how to do it. So yeah, but yeah, that's all I have for today. Hopefully this video helped you and hopefully y'all fare well in Math 104. Um, like I said, keep on top of everything. Do not get behind and just try your best and things should work out, hopefully. Have a good day.